Hurricanes. Have they become more common or destructive due to climate change? Let's look at just facts. A national scientific survey commissioned by Just Facts shows that 69% of U.S. voters believe that the global number and intensity of hurricanes and tropical storms have generally increased since the 1980s, including 90% of Democrats and 46% of Republicans. Yet as far back as reliable data exists, global hurricane frequency, intensity, and duration have all been level. Comprehensive global data sets published by the journal Geophysical Research Letters in 2011 and updated in 2018 show roughly flat trends for the past four to five decades. Likewise, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, reported in 2012, there is low confidence in any observed long-term, i.e. 40 years or more, increases in tropical cyclone activity, i.e. intensity, frequency, duration, after accounting for past changes in observing capabilities. This also applies to hurricanes, which are tropical cyclones with winds exceeding 73 miles per hour. How about further back in time? Records of Atlantic hurricanes stretch back for more than a century, and these also show stagnant trends. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory recently assessed that data and concluded, The historical Atlantic hurricane record does not provide compelling evidence for a substantial greenhouse warming-induced long-term increase. Similarly, the IPCC reported in 2013, No robust trends in annual numbers of tropical storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes counts have been identified over the past 100 years in the North Atlantic Basin. The stark disconnect between scientific facts and public perception of this issue accords with a mass of global warming-related misinformation spread by the media. A common thread among this misreporting is a focus on local conditions, anecdotes, and short-term trends. Because the Earth is vast and its climate varies widely over time and place, it is easy to paint a misleading picture by zooming in on certain aspects of it. For example, the popular narrative that global warming is causing more U.S. hurricane strikes crumbles in the face of long-term data. As detailed by the Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory, the full record of U.S. landfalling hurricanes actually shows a slight negative trend beginning from about 1900, or from the late 1800s. Counting only major hurricanes, the trend has been generally flat for 165 years. Because of the time span involved, no one could possibly know these facts from life experience, even if they had perfect memories. Yet a 2008 survey of Virginia residents found that the most common answer people give for believing or disbelieving in global warming is their personal experience of the climate. This makes them quite vulnerable to being misled by half-truths. Even if this data showed rising numbers of hurricanes, the Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory emphasizes that one cannot logically assess hurricane trends based only on those that reach land because they are much less common than the full number of those that form at sea. This highlights the importance of not drawing conclusions from narrow data. The U.S. contains only 1.9% of the world's surface area, yet media outlets and global warming activists often argue that the sky is falling based on local trends and events. This is called cherry-picking, which is reporting only information that reinforces a certain viewpoint and ignoring everything that doesn't. Basically, a form of lying by omission. Moreover, reporters and scholars sometimes misrepresent computer models that predict the future as if they are concrete facts. For example, the Washington Post cited a paper in the journal Earth's Future to claim that global warming made the infamous Hurricane Harvey worse than it otherwise would have been. The authors of this paper repeatedly assert that warmer oceans create more cyclone activity. However, tucked away at the end of one paragraph, they reveal that this conclusion comes from global modeling experiments and dynamically downscaled experiments. These are merely computer models that predict what will happen, not what has actually happened. Unlike those models, actual records show that cyclone activity has been level. The academic serial work Flood Geomorphology stresses the dangers of relying on computer models instead of hard data. 
True science is concerned with understanding nature, no matter what the methodology. In our view, if the wrong equations are programmed because of inadequate understanding of the system, then what the computer will produce, if believed by the analyst, will constitute the opposite of science. This is more than a mere academic debate. The media's misinformation can cause serious harm in at least three ways. First, it may spur voters to support policies that can cause serious harm to people, like increasing hunger. For instance, a 2018 study in the journal Nature Climate Change found that by 2050, stringent climate mitigation policy, if implemented evenly across all sectors and regions, would have a greater negative impact on global hunger and food consumption than the direct impacts of climate change. The negative impacts would be most prevalent in vulnerable, low-income regions such as sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, where food security problems are already acute. This study, like all studies that project the effects of government policies, should be taken with a grain of salt. But the fact is that these policies often involve trade-offs. Second, it can sow fear and hopelessness that has debilitating effects on people. For example, the World Health Organization found that the areas surrounding the Chernobyl nuclear accident received very low doses of radiation, and local populations show no evidence of any effect on the number of stillbirths, adverse pregnancy outcomes, delivery complications, or overall health of children. However, these people are suffering because persistent myths and perceptions about the threat of radiation have resulted in paralyzing fatalism among residents of affected areas. Third, it could fuel violence against lawmakers who act in accord with the facts of this issue instead of false media narratives, blaming them for deaths caused by hurricanes. Ironic, given that many news outlets have declared that President Trump endangers journalists by calling some of them the fake news media and the enemy of the people. I'm Amanda Reed Sheik, here with Just Facts. For thorough documentation of every fact in this video and more facts about this issue, read the article The Washington Post's Slander on Hurricanes and Climate Change at JustFactsDaily.com.